Welcome to our show. You're watching Connect the World. I'm Linda Kincaid in Atlanta, sitting in for Becky Anderson. Well, we start this hour with an extraordinary development. U.S. President Donald Trump seemingly squaring up to Russia just hours ago, tweeting, Russia vows to shoot down any and all missiles fired at Syria. Get ready, Russia, because they will be coming nice and new and smart. You shouldn't be partners with a gas-killing animal who kills his people and enjoys it. Well, reaction from Russia came hard and fast. Its foreign ministry spokeswoman saying smart missiles should fly towards terrorists, not the legal government that has been fighting international terrorism for several years on its territory. Well, meantime, the clock is ticking past a self-imposed deadline from Mr. Trump. On Monday, he promised a major decision on Syria would come within 48 hours. Well, that's just a glimpse into some of the major players in Syria right now. Of course, CNN is across all the angles for you. Our Frederick Plankton is in the Syrian capital of Damascus, around 30 minutes away where this suspected chemical attack took place, which, of course, kick-started this escalation. He's also the only Western journalist in Damascus right now. We also have with us Stephen Collinson following developments from Washington, as well as CNN Sam Kiley in Moscow on top of all the Russian side of this saga. I want to go first to Fred as the only Western journalist in Syria. President Trump ramping up his threat there. Just give us a sense of how Syria is responding right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Linda. I mean, this is some remarkable words that we heard uh, from Trump, uh, President Trump and certainly something that potentially could escalate the situation here on the ground in Syria. And the Syrian government indeed did respond through the foreign ministry. They're usually not this fast to do that. They said uh, that this is what they call, quote, a thoughtless escalation by the United States that lacks rationality and making it a threat to international peace and security. They say so, of the threats issued by President Trump, although of course the Syrians are saying that they had no part in that alleged chemical attack that took place here, or that allegedly took place here uh, on Saturday. And they also say that they're willing to allow international inspectors to come onto the ground. But of course, the words of President Trump were first and foremost aimed at the Russians uh, here in Syria. Uh, and the Russians, of course, have responded as well. They said that they would shoot down any missiles that were shot at Syria and also said that they would retaliate against the bases from where the missiles were shot from, of course, meaning potentially U.S. ships or U.S. warplanes in the area. And that, of course, uh, is something that could potentially mean a lot of danger as well. And Linda, you know, from covering this conflict, I've been here 20 times in Syria, including several times with the Russian military. They do have a very large presence here in this country. They have, of course, their big airfield uh, in Latakia. They have that port in Tartus. But they also have a lot of warship as, and other uh, infrastructure that people don't necessarily know about. In fact, I was on the Mediterranean Sea on a Russian destroyer once when several submarines surfaced all of a sudden and started firing cruise missiles back then uh, at ISIS positions. So the Russians have a lot of hardware here on the ground uh, and certainly most of their modern hardware and they are threatening to use that against the U.S. if in fact missiles are fired here at Syria. Linda. All right, Fred in Damascus, just stand by. I want to go to Sam Carley for the re Russian reaction to this because the big question is <clears throat> whether President Trump, whether the U.S. will go after Syria alone or whether it will also target Russia and Iran, who President Trump also blames uh, for sharing the responsibility of this apparent uh, chemical attack. How is Russia responding? Well, Russia is uh, taking the view at the moment, and we've just had a briefing from the defense ministry here, that uh, this is all uh, a load of play acting, that this chemical weapons attack was allegedly staged by the civil defense people with the white helmets, uh, that it was filmed using actors, and that there was no use of chemical weapons whatsoever in eastern Ghouta. So this is firmly uh, the position taken now by the Russians. In the past they've said uh, vari variations on that theme, but that now they seem to be sticking to this position. I don't think that they are concerned yet that they're uh, going to be targeted as Russians, as Russian uh, air force or, or ground-based personnel could come under attack from the United States. That would be an act of war. Uh, that would be a level of violence that has not existed since before the Second World War when it comes to the Allies and Russia. I don't think that, uh, certainly from the position of Vladimir P Putin in the Kremlin, 
and others, they want to get anywhere near to that, but they are interested in continuing to show chaos, so chaos uh, in the ranks of their regional rivals and particularly uh, inside the United States administration. And of course, uh, given Donald Trump's tweet today, which has probably blindsided his own planners inside the Pentagon by revealing uh, that, that he's most certainly is going to go ahead using sp smart weapons, that there will be an attack. Uh, as Fred has been saying, there's also been reports that the Syrians and others have been moving their military assets around to try to avoid being hit uh, in such attacks. But I don't think there's any question really that the Americans would go after Russian or Iranian assets at this stage, at least not deliberately. The problem is what happens if there is an accident, particularly a big accident, and then retaliation. Then you're into the realm of escalation well beyond the borders of Syria. Yeah, that is a major risk. Sam Kiley, I want to go to Stephen Collinson for more about that tweet from President Trump, who warned Russia to get ready. What happened to the Donald Trump who said he would never reveal his military plans ahead of time? Well, that was one of Donald Trump's mantras during his uh, election campaign in 2016, that he would be unpredictable. He didn't know, want US enemies to know what he was going to do. In fact, uh, way back in 2013, when President Obama was considering striking Syria after a chemical weapons attack, Trump fired off a couple of tweets complaining that the president was tipping his hand to U.S. enemies at that point. But Donald Trump has never been uh, consistent. Uh, he changes his mind and his tactics from one moment to the other. I think the question here is, first of all, the appropriateness of uh, giving this kind of announcement on Twitter to start with, uh, the cavalier nature with which the president talks about military action, and the way that he certainly, as Sam was saying, got ahead of the Pentagon. Uh, the Pentagon, in a rather pointed comment, said that it didn't comment on military action in advance. And you also have to question, I think, the wisdom of the president getting into a, a chess-beating competition with Russia uh, ahead of this action, uh, which is clearly going to exacerbate tensions in a very dangerous area in Syria and, and potentially raise the prospect of some sort of accident or some sort of confrontation between Russia and the United States, which is clearly uh, a historic and a very serious possibility. So uh, the way that the president is choosing to um, escalate this situation is worrying a lot of people in Washington. Yeah, that is a real possibility. And I, I just want to go back to Fred on how Syria, which has a tiny air force in comparison to the US, how it will face an attack like this and how it would lean, how much it would lean on its allies of Russia and Iran to defend it. Well, I don't think that uh, the Syrian Air Force would in any way, shape or form uh, be a match for the U.S. Air Force, especially with all the other planes uh, of the coalition that are also flying around here in the area. And we have to keep in mind that it's not only American planes that are here, but also the French have a sizable uh, contingent and the Brits also have a few uh, warplanes if they would indeed choose to participate in something like that. So the Syrians would lean heavily on their allies. Now, the Iranians themselves really don't have much in the way of an air force. They've been under embargo uh, for an extended period of time. In fact, I saw some of the Iranian planes at military parades that they do in and around Tehran every year. And most of them are very old American planes from the 1970s that the Iranians somehow managed to keep in the air. But they also have a lot of planes that, quite frankly, aren't airworthy at all. In fact, it doesn't seem as though the Iranians, at least on Syrian territory, have any uh, warplanes that they would be capable of using. So it would basically be the Russians uh, that would try to deter the Americans. The Russians have very modern jet fighters that they have stationed here. They also, in the past couple of months, actually, uh, put some of their very newest uh, fifth-generation uh, jets on uh, into Syria. Unclear whether that was just sort of for battle tests or whether those would actually participate uh, in any of uh, the combat operations. Those actually have stealth technology, but they are still uh, quite unproven. So the Russians have big capabilities. But the big question, of course, is also, Linda, that the U.S. will be asking is what sort of air defense capabilities are on the ground here. And with that, the Syrians have been largely depleted, especially after the Israelis launched a strike here uh, fairly recently, where they said they took out about half of Syria's air defense system. So there again, 
it would potentially be the Russians uh, that would try and take down any U.S. missiles or do uh, anything else. They have some very modern technology uh, on the ground here, but of course we also know that the U.S. Air Force is by far the most potent uh, Air Force in the entire world. And, uh, all right, Frederick Plankton, uh, the only Western journalist in Damascus, Syria. Good to have you with us. Sam Kiley in Moscow and Stephen Collinson in Washington, D.C. Thank you all very much.